colleagues and friends of New Jersey City University, I want to thank you today for joining us at this momentous occasion as we begin to address a portion of the long-standing capital infrastructure needs of NJCU. The recently enacted New Jersey Higher Education Field Facilities Bond Act has provided the state colleges and universities with the capital funding necessary to address our facilities needs. For NJCU, the awarding of the $34.6 million in capital funding will allow the university to upgrade its academic and administrative information technology infrastructure and further to renovate and expand our existing science building, which houses the university's programs in biology, chemistry, physics, and geoscience. Before commencing with our program, please allow me the opportunity to formally thank NJCU's Board of Trustees for their unequivocal support for this project and introduce to you Ray Perez, our Board Chair, for brief greetings. Good morning. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, it's my pleasure and honor to welcome you all here on this uh, occasion. Um, we haven't been uh, doing too many groundbreakings lately, and I think uh, Sue has kind of decided that we're going to uh, ratchet that up a little bit. So uh, I'm happy that we're here today, and I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, at that point, I'd like to turn it over back to Sue. Thank you. Today's groundbreaking ceremony commemorates the initial physical work for the expansion and the renovation of our science building. This effort could not have been possible without support of legislative officials and friends of NJCU who are instrumental in crafting and endorsing the Bond Act which authorized these expenditures. So allow me please to introduce to you the several legislators with us here today to offer some brief remarks. And before I start, I want to say this. I've had the opportunity to work in a number of states. And one of the things that struck me so solidly when I came to New Jersey is the support of higher, for higher education by our legislators. And I, my hat is off to them for the hard work that they do because I know it is tireless work. And I so appreciate that, their commitment to this. So I'd like to start with Senator Cunningham. She is the chair of the Senate's Higher Education Committee and represents our own district. Senator? Thank you so much, President Henderson, and welcome everyone. I am just so happy to be here today because this is, it is wonderful to see legislation work, and it's working with this. I'm so proud of the newly enacted uh, New Jersey Higher Education Bond Act. This act was created to give our colleges and universities the opportunities to expand its facilities and to make it easier and better for our young people to go to school here. One of our concerns is that we like our New Jersey students to stay in New Jersey. And the only way that we can The only way that we can do that is by offering them the best possible education, the best education. And that can only take place if our schools and facilities have the kind of facilities that they need to provide that kind of education. It's good for New Jersey, it's good for their education, and it's good for the economy of the state, which we can never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cunningham. I think the data point I learned was that it's about $30,000, 30,000 students a year that leave this state to go to other places to go to school. And very often they don't come back. And we need them here as educated citizens. So let's keep them home. A person I'd like to recognize who was unable to be here uh, due to the famous New Jersey traffic <laughs> is Senator Loretta Weinberg. Um, she is a staunch supporter of higher education as well, as well as women's issues. She represents District 37 just north. And so if we could thank her for her support. <laughs> I'd like at this time to ask Assembly Assemblyman Vincent Prieto, because he was on his way. Um, he is another individual. He's the chair of the Assembly Budget Committee and he represents District 22, 32, excuse me, in Western Hudson County. So uh, if he shows up, I would like to make sure that he has an opportunity to, to share with us his remarks. Another important person I'd like to recognize is Assemblyman Charles Maynard. Thank you. 
Assemblyman Maynard is an NJCU alumnus. He represents our District 31 and he currently chairs the Assembly's Law and Public Safety Committee and sits as a key member of the Assembly Higher Edu Education member. I also want to give thanks to two individuals whose commitment to the success of NJCU's future efforts emerge as one of this, nature's premier, na this nation's premier public urban university is unparalleled. I'd like to ask Tom DeGeese, he's the Hudson County Executive, to be recognized at this point. <laughs> Tom, would you come bring remarks? Sure. That comes to Next time. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here today uh, on this momentous uh, occasion. You know, uh, as a Jersey City guy my whole life, I've always viewed NJCU as a work in progress, from State Teachers College to where we are today, right now. Uh, it has shown a growth that has reflected its community and the needs of its community. We built two, uh, using a similar type of bond ordinance from the state, Hudson County Community College has built two new standalone uh, from the ground up buildings in the Journal Square in North Hudson areas and we're working on another one on Pavonia Avenue right now. Uh, every year, and I mentioned this at Dr. Henderson's uh, inauguration, every year I go to the graduation for HCCC uh, and Dr. Gabriel asks each of the students as they accept their diploma, what are you going to be doing with yourself next year? Well over half of them say, we're coming to NJCU for, to finish the degree. The way that community colleges have evolved over the years and the way that they've worked together with NJCU, I think is a, a model for a people all over the educational community to, uh, to copy. I'm very pleased to be here. There's nothing like being a, at, a, at a groundbreaking, unless, of course, you're at a ribbon cutting. And we'll be here uh, before you know it with that ribbon cutting. And I congratulate and, uh, NJCU for the endeavor. Thank our legislators for all the help in helping this happen. And wish you the best of luck in science and technology building. Thank you. Finally, someone who has come on board just as I have. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce Stephen Fulop, New Jersey City Mayor. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I'm just going to really quickly reiterate some of the comments of Tom DeGees and uh, Senator Cunningham. And I just want to start by thanking Sue Henderson. She has really breathed uh, fresh life into NJCU in a partnership with Jersey City and the Jersey City Public School System and Hudson County Community College that really is second to none. She recognizes that uh, NJCU's fate is uh, tied to Jersey City's fate, and uh, we really appreciate your leadership on that, so thank you. And you know, th this is a great thing. It's $35 million as a byproduct of uh, state legislation championed by Senator Cunningham and uh, the Assembly. And I, I just wanted to say th this is one of the examples of really government working effectively, where you have all the different levels of government working together to really get something that tangible, that students will be able to appreciate and will make the city that much better. Um, Jersey City is terrifically positioned as it relates to higher education looking forward between Senator Cunningham on that committee and Vinci, Vinnie Prieto going to be the speaker. And it really is a testament to the opportunity that we have to really make NJCU excel amongst educational facilities of this size across the state of New Jersey. So um, as Tom said, it is great to be here for a groundbreaking, better to be here for a ribbon cutting. That's a great comment. And uh, um, we're congratulations on this. We're looking forward to being here in a, a short time to see it at completion. So thank you. Steve, I want to thank you so much. Um, before I introduce the next individual, I want to share with you some interesting um, information I shared last week with the Senate Higher Education Committee. We were there talking about graduation rates and how important that is that we not only keep New Jersey City, New Jersey students home, <laughs> but we get them graduated through in a timely manner. Students who come to us from a community college just finish at a very pay fast pace here. They finish at a 75% uh, graduation rate, which was quite healthy and really a national norm. So that lets me know that our students who begin at places like Hudson County Community College or Bergen Community College do quite well once they get here, thanks to the good work of our faculty. So it's an important point to remember as we kind of move forward. 
I'd also like today to recognize Rolando Lavero. He's the New Jersey City Council President who was gracious enough to attend today's Romero. Uh, Rolando? <laughs> So the passage of the Bond Act also required the support of several statewide associations and organizations who today grace our presence. From the New Jersey Association of State Colleges and University, our Trenton-based advocacy association, which helped to guide the member campuses through the challenging fiscal and political climate our state faces to accomplish the passage of the Bond Act, we have Barbara Berensky, the Association's Director of Government and Legal Affairs. Barbara? I always enjoy my meetings with the presidents because she brings new life, but she brings the reports from the other side of the street. <laughs> Uh, representing the New Jersey Alliance for Action, the state's premier association that advocates tirelessly for New Jersey's investment in our aging infrastructure and a significant advocate for the Bond Act's passage, we have with us today Jerry Keenan, the Alliance's Executive Vice President. Also with us today is Ciro Scalera. He's representing the New Jersey Laborers, Employees at Corporation and Education, which contributed significant funding and advocacy support for this membership and the Bond Act's passage. Ciro? <laughs> Finally, we have with us today the students and the faculty from our science programs who will benefit significantly from the science building's upgrades. I want to share a quick story with you. Two weeks ago, I was down in New Brunswick. I was at a something called an LSAP conference. It's a grant that comes from the federal government, and it's given to faculty all over the state to help engage undergraduate students in research. Now, once those students finish doing the research, they create something called a poster. And then they go and present these posters at national conferences, but then also down at this particular conference. I was so proud. We had the most number of posters represented there to the tune of about 20, am I correct? And then we had the most number of, of, of awards at the end of that. So I would say that our science program is on a roll. Congratulations. So on the behalf of the faculty and students, I'd like to introduce Dr. John Grew. He's the chair of the biology department to offer some brief comments. Uh, hello and welcome everyone and thank you for joining us on this most auspicious day as we break ground uh, for the long-awaited uh, renewal and expansion of our science building. Um, Dr. Henderson has acknowledged the public office holders so I'll, I'll move on and I want to uh, recognize some of the folks who uh, locally have really contributed to the success of this project so far and will continue to do so I'm sure. Um, so first of all, uh, on behalf of the uh, students and the faculty members of the, <clears throat> the biology, chemistry, geosciences, and physics departments, I would like to express our collective uh, gratitude to Dr. Henderson for her leadership, to Dr. Bruno for her advocacy, to Dr. Aska and Mr. Andrade for their, and their staffs for uh, the hard work and excellent uh, work that they did in preparing the successful grant, uh, the proposal for, for funding. Uh, NJCU's science and math departments uh, currently serve about 700 students in a wide range of programs and our students chiefly uh, aspire to careers in health, pharma, non-pharma chemistry, material science, biomedical devices and products, environmental science and advocacy, and science and math teaching to name a few. <clears throat> our graduates are thus well positioned to enter New Jersey's competitive workforces in these employment sectors. NJCU science and math enrollments have collectively grown by about 100% over the past decade, and in continuing this trend, we expect to serve approximately 1,000 science and math majors by 2018. New Jersey's Department of Economic, uh, excuse me, De New Jersey's Department of Employment and Workforce Development has identified acute needs for trained individuals to work in key fields that NJCU can support. By 2020, New Jersey must add about 24,000 health practitioners, 26,000 health care support personnel, 157,000 computer and math specialists, and 10,000 teachers. <clears throat> These job growth areas require trained professionals who hold specialized bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. 
the confluence of the high interest in NJCU science and math programs, the high workforce demand for science and math graduates, and the expansion and renovation of NJCU science building create the perfect opportunity for NJCU to take a leading role in shaping New Jersey's technology-based economic development. NJCU embarked on the, an expansion of its science faculty in 2012, beginning to hire and support at an unprecedented level science and, and math faculty. <clears throat> With new teaching and research labs, these faculty members will serve as mentors for undergraduate students, as curriculum developers, and as practicing professionals who bring research grant, grant support to the institution and publicize NJCU in their own uh, scientific communities. We have a unique and exciting opportunity to take science and math at NJCU to the next level, <clears throat> but more so, we have the opportunity to increase the participation of NJCU's graduates in the New Jersey economy and provide more of our students with the opportunities for socioeconomic upward mobility that constitute the American dream. And personally, I couldn't be happier. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. <clears throat> I'm very excited for this group of faculty as well as students. They are hardworking. You see them here day and night, winter and summer, depending on this, always, always, always working. And they have such a passion for their field. Thank you. Finally, I'd like to thank the key members of NJCU's administration and faculty who worked closely with Spiegel, the Spiegel, uh, Spiesel Architectural Group. If, are they here today? Could you please stand? I've always said that architects have an unusual job. You have to take people's ideas and make it bake form that we all live for the next with 25 or 30 years. So thank you for your work. This group provided the impetus for ensuring that the project would address the current and future needs of NJCU students and seeking meaningful careers in New Jersey's growing science and technology-based economy. Thank you all for coming today and participating in this very special ceremony. And please, Join us from a light, light refreshments following our groundbreaking ceremony. And yes, in a few years, we'll have the ribbon cutting along with other groundbreakings. Thank you very much. Yeah, Friday. Friday. Two o'clock. Yeah. One o'clock. Two o'clock. <laughs>